What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we'll be covering how to create this hit that like button animation inside of After Effects. Now, if you don't want to follow this tutorial and you just want the project file, there's a link down in the description where you can just download the project file. Also, inside of that project file, there's footage that I've created that you can just drag and drop onto any of your timelines like Final Cut or Premiere or Sony Vegas. As you can see here, it's super easy to do and there's no animation required, no After Effects required. You can just download that and it'll work. But other than that, let's get started and let's create this thing. So we have After Effects open and the first thing we need to do is create a new composition. So over here in your project window, if you don't see that, you go to window and you go to project somewhere. There it is and boom. And then we'll right click and click new composition. Pops open a dialog box and we're ready to go. Now for this, we'll call it, you know, comp one's totally fine. You could set it to 1920, ooh, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, but I'm going to set mine to 3840 by 2160 because all of my tutorials I make are 4K tutorials, and the duration is going to be 10 seconds with a black background, and we'll hit OK. Now we actually need to download an asset to create this animation. We need a thumbs up image to pop up onto the screen and pop off. So we're going to jump into Google and we're going to type in thumbs up PNG. Now PNG for a very specific reason because that is a transparent background. We'll click images, we'll find a thumbs up that we like. This looks kind of cool, this looks kind of cool. I think for this one we'll use this one. How cool is that? Let's go view image. It's 2000 by 2000 and we'll save this image as and I already have a couple saved in my asset folder. We'll just keep them there. Now, once you've saved this into your, you know, an asset folder somewhere, let's open up that folder and go ahead and drag it into our timeline. Drag it right here. And as you can see, we have two different thumbs. You'll see why here in a little bit. Boom, it's in here. Now we're going to create a new folder in After Effects and call it Assets, where we can drop all these images into here. So thumbs up right there. Okay, first things first, we need to take this thumb and drag it into our timeline. It is massive, and it's also black, so let's turn off our background with this button right here so we can actually see it. Let's go ahead and hit S on our keyboard and scale this thumb down a bunch. I think right about there is great. So we're going to right-click this thumbs up and hit pre-compose, and you'll see why we're doing this after a while. Um, new composition name, we'll call it thumbs up, and click OK. Leave all attributes in comp one. OK. Now that is our thumbs up pre-comp which is kind of cool and it's very useful then what we're going to do is hit Control d on our keyboard or command d for you mac users and duplicate this layer then we'll move it over to the right and we'll hit s on our keyboard and see the scale is 19 percent your scale may be different but we need what we need to do is just negative that number inside of here not negative v something just negative 19 for in my case because it's a 4k thing I scaled it down if you're working with a 1080p comp from your sequence settings from your composition settings it'll be a different number but for me it's negative 19 and it makes it a thumbs down that is a re reverse of what we see on YouTube but now let's actually add a background so just so we can I'm kinda getting annoyed with this clear checkerboard it's messing with mine so we're gonna right click in here and do new solid and blues totally fine and we'll drag it to the bottom and lock it because we don't really need it. Cool. It makes me feel better now. So now we need to take our text tool, click on the screen, and we'll type out 000. zero, zero. And currently the text is red for some reason. That's totally fine. We can always change that color to a brighter color so we can see it a little better. Oop, highlight it. And then change it to a brighter color. And we're going to make it a little bigger. And put it right next to the numbers. Make it a little bigger so it fits pretty well. I think we can change the font. I'm using Proxima Nova bold. You can use whatever font you'd like. Now let's make sure that the paragraph is not set to center, left, or it needs to be set to this right here. So if you don't see your paragraph option, go to Window, Paragraph. Boom, it pops open and make sure it's set to this so the numbers are counting from the right. and that's awesome so we need to create this little counter of numbers as it goes up so what we'll do is click on our numbers go to our effect control panel so window effect controls somewhere there it is boom effect controls 
pops up in a new box right here. We can right click, expression controls, and then slider control, which is gonna be a cool tool we use to create these number sliders. So after that, once your slider control's in here, we'll drop down on this little box for our text, drop down on this, and we will alt or command click this text and it, everything disappears. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Then we'll take this little pinwheel and we'll drag it up to the slider control slider right here, which is pretty actu pretty cool actually. So basically what that says is whatever number we set this slider to will be this number. So we want it to start at zero. I don't, know, I don't know, three seconds in our time. We will key the slider at zero. And at, towards the end of our animation, right at seven seconds, or yeah, seven and a half seconds maybe, we want it to be 100 likes. So we'll type in 100. And boom, it's going to count up to 100 likes. So if we play this animation out real fast, it's going crazy. What? It's supposed to be counting just to 100. And it is. It is counting to 100. If you can see right here, there's the number. It's counting all of it. But it's also counting the decimal points, which is kind of weird. But we can fix that. So under our source text, if you drop down, you might see it. There's like this text right here that we just, it's basically effect slider control slider. This is our little expression that makes it be controlled by the slider control. We're going to type a new thing. We're going to type math.round and then parentheses and parentheses, which is going to actually round this number off. So it's 35 all the way to 100. So now it counts up to 100, which is what we want. Now what we need is a mouse to actually fly in here, click on this and fly off to start the counter. Super simple, but we're going to make our own mouse in this composition. So what we'll do is go up to our shape control right here, hold down on our mouse, go to our polygon tool and drag out a polygon. Mine's already at a triangle, but yours may be like an octagon or something. What you do is you just hit down on your keyboard and it, or down or up, whatever you prefer, and it changes the side count, which is super easy. Then we hit shift to make it go straight up and boom, we now have the top of our mouse. What we'll do again is grab our shape tool and grab the rectangle tool and we'll drag out a rectangle on the bottom to create the tail end of the mouse. Then we can go into our rectangle and actually like, you know, scale it out on the sides here to make the mouse a little fatter. And I want the mouse to look a little more bubbly like the animation was before. So we'll click this, we'll click our shape, click down on our rectangle, click down on our rectangle path, and we'll round the edges of this, which is kind of cool. And then we'll click down on our polystar, um, polystar path, and then outer roundness, round that off too. Now we have a cool like mouse that's been rounded off a little bit. Nice, nice, nice. Now what we'll do is click on this mouse and we'll hit R on our keyboard and rotate it to the angle we want it to be. And now it's rotating around our anchor point, which is kind of cool. Um, but we need to move that anchor point real fast before we keep rotating this thing. So what we're going to do is actually click on this mouse, click on our anchor point tool right here, pan behind, grab the anchor point and kind of drag it to the center of the mouse. And that works plenty good for me. Then we'll rotate it to like right here. And it needs to be a lot smaller. So we'll scale it down. Hit shift on your keyboard and pull the scale anchor down about right there. And that looks pretty good. So right now, our counter starts right here. Click U on our keyboard after we click our number to see where the counter starts. And this is where the mouse is going to click. So that's where it needs to end up. So a little bit before this counter starts, we're going to actually hit P on our keyboard on our mouse and keyframe the position. Go back in time and actually drag it off the screen like it's getting you know flung on there. Let's go ahead and rename this layer too, just because. Rename mouse. Almost forgot. Then it's gonna click. It's gonna stay on screen for a second after the click. We'll keyframe it again, go down our timeline, and it'd be off the screen. So if we play that out, it comes on the screen, click off the screen. We want this to happen a little faster. Maybe stay on there a little longer. Be there a little earlier and get off the screen a little faster. So it's gonna be like, boom, off the screen. Now the click is super easy. We'll hit, click on our mouse, hit S on our keyboard. 
we'll zoom in on our layer frame by frame pretty much start here scale keyframe the scale go to where the thing starts we'll scale it down a little bit maybe different for you depending on how big it is and it's gonna scale back up to its original 41% I think so copy this keyframe command C or control C and then command or control V and boom click Ooh, that's a fast click so let's make it a little slower so we'll just drag these keyframes out a little more a little more frames kinda cool that is a quick click perfect and that's when our number starts counting maybe it counts a little later awesome a few more steps involved to get this animation done and ready what we're gonna do is highlight all the layers click you on our keyboard see where things starts that's the animation right there and everything needs to become on screen right about here so um, we'll highlight all of this stuff click P on our keyboard position it position keyframe everything and then drag it off the, the timeline right here the first thing that needs to slide on here is the numbers the second is the thumbs up that is the second one which is this right here and there's the last one so it's gonna tear up here kinda like that the numbers will be a little earlier this will be a little later just like that and then the mouse comes on clicks starts our numbers it goes up to 100 and then we'll keyframe the position on all of these one more time and then they go off screen so the thumbs down goes first thumbs up goes second and the numbers go last just like that what we're gonna do now is make all of this motion inside of these keyframes look nice instead of this A to B motion so click everything click U on your keyboard and you can highlight all of these keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease and boom maybe this sits on there a little longer and you have a nice slick pretty nice animation that plays the counter up now we need to create some type of color for this animation so it actually looks nice like maybe everything's white when this gets clicked this thumbs up changes to a different color and everything goes off screen after that so what we're gonna do is go to our effect controls window or excuse me effects and presets and we're gonna type fill and we're gonna drag a fill onto our first thing right here and it's gonna change the red let's actually change it to white and we're gonna take this fill and we're gonna copy it command C or control C and drop it onto the mouse drop it onto the thumbs down drop it onto the thumbs up everything's white and because everything's white maybe maybe we'll put a drop shadow on the uh, mouse to make it look a little nicer so go back to your effects and presets type drop shadow or drop here's drop shadow drop it onto your mouse we can change the direction of it the distance of it the softness and it looks kinda nice it kinda stands out now and now we want to create a color controller that will let us control all these colors in one layer that we just copied and pasted on here so what we're gonna do is gonna right click new adjustment layer call this color control so change it to color control then inside of the effect controls for color control we're gonna right click expression control color control take this right click expression control color control color control color control now there's only four elements in this animation and we put four here but we're gonna do a fifth so it's gonna be a new color for the thing when it gets clicked color control 
cool. What we'll do now is actually click E on our keyboard for the mouse, shows the fill, and we're gonna actually drop down on our color control here, go to our effects, color control right here, rename this to mouse, alt click or command click this little thing right here, grab our little pinwheel and bring it up to color, which now it's being controlled by the color control inside of here. Close this down, open up your numbers, open up the fill under the effects right here scroll up to our second color control we'll rename this to numbers and find our little color under the fill for that layer command or alt click move this up so we can see go up and click this color color control three do uh, thumbs up. Drop this down. Thumbs up. I think this is the thumbs down actually. Thumbs up. Effect. Fill. Color. Alt or Command click. Bring this up to thumbs up. This is going to be rename this thumbs up change, which is the color it's going to change to when it gets clicked. So what we'll do is take the thumbs up again. We'll drag another fill onto it because we need to assign a new fill to that. Not dot fill in effects and presets. Drop a new fill onto this. Fill two. And assign this to the th uh, thumbs up change color. Alt click this or command click if you're on a Mac. That'll be that color. And then color five is our thumbs down. Drop down. Here's our thumbs down. Effect, fill, alt click. Drag the sound to thumbs down. Now everything's being controlled. Only thing now is to when it gets clicked is when it needs to be changed right there so we'll find our th our th thing getting clicked our thumbs getting clicked click down on this little down arrow go to our effects find our fill 2 and boom clicking we're gonna drop down on the compositing options and we're gonna keyframe at hundred percent move this forward and then roll it back down to zero percent so this is the compo compositing option for our second fill so the fill effect is going to fade in when it gets clicked. It's pretty simple. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we go back to our color control. We can change these colors. So mouse, we can change it back to white. Our numbers, we can change it to white. Thumbs up, change it to white. The color it's getting going to be changed to is red. See, that's the change we created. So we can just leave it red. The thumbs down can be white. just like that so it scrolls on looks pretty awesome to me and that color control is also how people make template color control stuff I use it all the time it's pretty nice now the reason we made this thumbs up a pre comp in the very beginning is we can go back to our project thumbs up double click into that composition which is this and we can always drag in a different thumb asset from the beginning so thumbs up Drag this into our assets and drag this into here. Make this a little bigger. Turn the old one off. It's like changing a logo placeholder or something. So our thumbs are now these, which can be super helpful depending on what kind of animation you're trying to make. And it follows all the same effects as the thing we made before. So that's pretty easy, pretty easy. And one more cool thing we can do is actually right click new null object. Turn this button on so we can see it right there. This little button right here makes it so you can see the null objects in the little graph area thingies like this. So if it was hidden for you, just click this little button, it'll be back. Um, we can grab the null, put it right here. We can highlight all of this stuff, 
parent it to the null, and we can move all of this stuff around at once. It's all sitting there. We can kind of put this in the center. Title action safe. Turn that on real fast with this button and drop this thumb right in the center. We can also scale this stuff down if we want with the null. Easy and simple like that. But it's an easy way to move it all at once if it doesn't look very, you know, lined up. So if we want to turn turn off this thumbs down and then grab this null and put this in the center, like you saw in the very beginning of this tutorial, a super easy way to do that. And the final step after you're all good with all this stuff is just, just to render it out. So we can we can turn off the background. We have this. We can go to composition, add to render, add to render queue, um, click the lossless options, which opens up a new dialog box, change it to RGB plus alpha to render it without a background, and uh, choose where you want to save it. And uh, you're good to go. Looks really awesome. But that is how you create this little animation for all of your thumbs up, like, subscribe kind of stuff. Hopefully, I did some things in this tutorial that will teach you other cool aspects of animation. I typically try to cover everything in a weird way, so you'll learn new techniques along the way besides what the main goal of this is, which is creating this animation. Things like the color control, connecting the dots here and there, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to help out, teach where I can. Other than that, I'm Max. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.